to be a musician, but none of us are to be a uh, journalist. Hey, no one wants to fly in Concord. I mean, no one wants to meet Sharon Stone. I mean, hey, well. So nobody wants to be a Baz. Oh, well, there's only one. Not see. as yet. <laughs> Come on, Not yet. yet. He's making loads of money. Try it. Come on, I'm give him sure a ring. He is. Okay, if you would like advice from Michaela, Baz, or Level 42, it's the usual number, 051 555 1000. They'll be taking your calls at 11.50. And here's the rest of the lineup. Welcome back. Now, if you've ever wanted to be a pop star, a presenter, or a journo, we have the experts in to help us with our phone-in this morning. One, one of the things I've noticed about everybody here, I mean, all showbiz people, is that is the tasteful clothes. Have you noticed where everybody is colour coat? Oh, yes, sorry, Baz. Oh, Baz, <laughs> I'm sorry. This is an aphrodisiac tie, actually. Uh, is it? Caviar and champagne. And I, I like the watch as well. That's well, very thank, smart. Thank well, actually, I'd like a name check it. We, we got a good friend. Rachel Fleming is a girl that sorts us out on clothes and things. Oh, so uh, if she's around out there, Rachel, thanks. Fantastic. And, and anybody else you'd like to say hello to? Can we get on with this <laughs> phone in? <laughs> just just anybody that did buy our latest single forever now. <laughs> oh, now you've been very, very busy in the, in the phone room, I believe. <laughs> and first up, we've got Farron from Middlesbrough. Hello, Farron. Hi. Now, you want to have a word with Mark and Mike, don't you? Yeah. OK, oh, well, hi, what's Baron. that about? Um, I wanted to ask whether it's um, advisable to move south in uh, search of fame and fortune. Because, obviously, up in the northeast, there just isn't the places to perform. Uh, well, that's, that's a tough one, Fan. I'll tell you what, uh, I, in 1976, I, I saved up enough money to go to um, New York. I flew to New York to see an old hero of mine, a drummer called Lenny White. And uh, I, because I had his address, and I turned up at his house, knocking on the door. And I, and I honestly don't know what I thought I was going to say when I <laughs> got there, but he was such a hero of mine. And, you know, he opened the door, and, you know, he asked me the question. He said, you know, why are you here? And I said, well, I thought that this is where it happens in New York. I had to come to New York. And he said, well, that's not really uh, true. He said, because when I go to, you know, he said, here in New York, everyone thinks it's happening in Los Angeles. He said, when I get to Los Angeles, everyone tells me it's happening in London. He said, and I'm sure that, you know, I'm, he said, you're from London way, he said, you know, that, and you think it's happening in New York. The thing is, it sort of happens where you make it happen. You know, the thing is, is that you gig with your band, you gig around with your band, you play in as many places as you possibly can. I mean, do you have a band, Farron? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah? Well, you, you play in as many places as you possibly can. That's not easy. There aren't many places to play, I know. But uh, from the Isle of Wight, where I live, there are, there are precious few gigs where bands can play live. But... Um, you just have to gig around as much as you can, try and get a, uh, uh, some support going, and that way record companies will start taking an interest, and I just wish you the best of luck. There you go, Farron, a bit of advice from the expert himself. If you make it big in Middlesbrough, well, the world's your oyster, really, isn't it? We'll take a call now from Lily in London. Hello, Lily. Hi. Now, you have a question for Michaela. Yes, I do. Um, the question is, I'm a young Asian woman who wants to be a TV presenter, and the problem I feel is that there isn't enough um, slots on TV for Asian presenters, other than just being... Um, you know, typecast onto sort of network east or something like that. And how do I get more parts? How do I sort of get myself onto mainstream TV? I actually don't think it matters that whether you're Asian, whatever colour, creed or religion you are, you can get into TV presenting if you want to get into it. And if you're good enough, you'll get into it. People, I think television is a very open business and it doesn't really have any barriers anymore. I mean, maybe it used to and there weren't as many female presenters. But if you're good, you're going to get it. And these days, people are delighted to have Asian, delighted to have black people on television. I mean, they really are. I mean, yeah, yes, it's the same with journalism, they actually. It's it's like, it's, it's, there, there are no barriers At anymore. the end of the day, it's, 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 it's whether you can do the job, yeah. frankly. How badly do you want to do the job? That's it, too. You know, yeah. If you really, really want to do it, then you hassle your way in there. You, know, you uh, must make your own chances. Uh, absolutely. I was a bit worried earlier, because when I was talking about being on Concord with Joey Hall, which is very nice, but when I first started my career, look, I couldn't afford the bus fare, you know. So, yeah. <laughs> You, you start at the bottom and then you work up. And if you want to do it hard enough, you can do it, Lily. Mm. So, Lily, I, I would recommend that you sort of try and become a presenter rather than an Asian presenter. No, I don't want to be an Asian presenter. I Just want to be a presenter. But I, I find that there's, there's not enough parts. And I, my, my experience is that there is... You do get typecast. You do get put into certain slots. But and have you been for any auditions? Yes, though? I have. I mean, and, and I, I often feel that. I mean, I, I think I, I think I make a very good presenter when I make it. But I mean, what I what the problem I feel is that I don't think I'll ever be able to present um, this morning, or because I think that there's a fear of 
um, I don't think I'll ever be able to present this morning either. But, <laughs> but just go and do kick doors down. Just kick doors down. You mustn't have that attitude that you can only sort of, that, that, that there aren't slots for you. That's silly. Yeah, it, yeah, does, yeah. it doesn't just bode well. Just kick a few doors down. Yeah, yeah, you mustn't set limits for yourself. Absolutely. Basically. If you're putting barriers up for yourself, Lily, then, um, you know, you're, you're creating them. They're not really there, you know. You can have it all if you want it all. Oh, Lily, oh. what more encouragement do you need, really? <laughs> I wish you all the very, very best of luck with that. Anyway, thanks for calling in. We've got Georgina from London on the line now with a question for Baz. You got one, Baz. Yes. Oh, thank you. Thank, Georgina, thank you so much for calling. Oh, I had to give you a question. I just had to. I want your job. Well, you can't. <laughs> Not yet, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> what it actually is. <laughs> I'm blushing, don't. Uh, I can sorry, see it, I can see it. Um, I'm actually doing a degree in media studies at the moment. Uh -huh. um, I've just started, I'm in my first year. And um, I've really taken an interest to like showbiz journalism. Mm -hmm. And I've written to various companies asking to go in for a day, see what it's like and that sort of thing. Yeah. But I've had no response. So I want to know any other approaches. Well, let me tell you this. You don't sort of get a showbiz job off straight off. I mean, I worked as in courts as a crime reporter. You know, I covered local papers. I used to cover, oh goodness, you know, little magistrates, court cases and funerals and sort of tea parties and open days you have to start at the bottom and i used to sort of cover richmond theater uh, when i was on a local paper and i used to sort of interview the local stars who come into the theater every week and built my way up from there also you're gonna love showbiz because hey it ain't all glamorous i mean it's standing outside stage doors sort of chasing these kind of guys around and uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, and also, you, you, I mean, you've really got to sort of want to do it. If I were you, I'd start compiling sort of lists now. You know, get to know movie stars, you know, go and see their films, write to a few publicists, a few producers, you know, yeah. chase uh, you, these people. I've got a good idea as well, actually, Sanders. <laughs> you could get in touch with a local radio station, possibly, mm. and you could maybe do something like maybe do a package a week. You could make things up, find out about showbiz people, go along, interview them, because they're always very keen to have anything that people can mm. offer, up to a certain standard, obviously, but that's a way of getting in, there possibly. Goes your regular job. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> yes. Yes. Or, or offer a local paper a column or something, make it up yourself, you know, sort of write about. You know, the latest singles, for instance, yeah. and give it to the local paper for nothing. Get your name in the paper. Is it fair to say you need all that grinding experience at the bottom for later on? Because it's Oh, you have to. I mean, I, I, as I say, I used to be a crime reporter, and hey, it's put me in very good stead to cover show business, I tell you. It really did. So you know how not to get sued? Yes. <laughs> to a point, to a point. <laughs> Georgie, do you think that's going to help you? Yes, it is, actually. But I'm just a bit worried that, I mean, especially these days, they're mostly looking like 17...